Who the hell am I? Every franchise has to evolve or die. There's nothing wrong with bowing out, hanging up your hat triumphantly, especially at the end of a trilogy or console life cycle. But every now and then, an entity refuses to pass on and returns, ready to redefine itself. When that anxious plan of attack fails, it can be painful to watch. Cashing in on an old name is a common occurrence in games, so we had to get specific. In order for it to be a reboot and not a remake, it couldn't have existed first in a medium outside of games, which unfortunately acts the abysmal Shadowrun shooter. We also tried to avoid subtitles so blunders like Golden Axe Beast Rider didn't cut it. With these limitations, we still found 10 franchises that clearly weren't ready for their rebirth. Jump! <laughs> Number 10, NFL Blitz. 1997's Blitz was the football game we always dreamed of. Every player is an absurd, hulked out monster version of themselves who loves to jump and smash. Most importantly, if your friend scores a touchdown, you can knock him over during his victory dance. This is the foundation of the entire Blitz experience. Unfortunately, the modern day NFL doesn't like their brand associated with this kind of funny business. And 2012's NFL Blitz features slightly more realistic character models, kinder looking tackles, and no victory dance interruptions. Simply put, EA made a meatball sub without the meatballs. Oh, nice catch! Touchdown! Number 9. <laughs> Frogger. We don't know what we were expecting out of a Frogger remake in 1997, but the intrepid amphibian deserves better. Super Mario 64 and Tomb Raider 2 came out in 97, so Hasbro Interactive could have let Frogger jump wherever he wanted. Instead, we go back in time 16 years, adding bad controls and a frustrating camera. They wanted to emphasize, he's back, so much, they added it to the title, as if just putting a 3D frog on a box would get people excited. Frogger might be as relevant as Qbert and Bubsy, but he's found a new life in mobile games. It's just a shame he never got a chance to make it across the road and into the spotlight. Number 8. Turok The original Turok Dinosaur Hunter for Nintendo 64 was a landmark title. Its sequel, Seeds of Evil, was even better. Both featured inspired weaponry like the Tech Bow, Razor Wind, and legendary Cerebral Boar. So it came as a huge disappointment when the 2008 reboot had a generic and downright insulting arsenal. Not only was there a lack of variety, but it featured one of the worst shotguns in recent memory. The overemphasis on the knife didn't help matters, as it rendered other weapons useless with its sheer destructive power. We didn't need the series to get a glossy makeover with Gears of War rejects. We just wanted more Turok. Ever used one of these? Once or twice. Number 7. Syndicate. 2012 Syndicate was an unremarkable but still basically competent first-person shooter with a sense of style from a dark techno future, so why is it on this list? Because the original Syndicate was an utterly original tactical action game played from an isometric perspective where you could command a team of cybernetically enhanced agents to create destructive mobs of mind-controlled citizens using a weapon called the Persuadertron while blowing up cars and even leveling entire city blocks. Taking an idea like that and turning it into a generic story-driven shooter with a grindy multiplayer component would seem like an unforgivable crime. But we do realize game developers have to eat. What are you- ah! Number 6. Medal of Honor. Heroic beards and a lukewarm critical reception decorated 2010's massive EA reboot of Medal of Honor, which in the end, sadly became as memorable as the men and women serving as our nation's nameless Tier 1 operatives. Previously set in World War II, the Medal of Honor reboot placed players in Afghanistan, concentrating on a modern setting. Riddled with drab textures, design flaws, idiotic AI, and many other problems befitting of dishonorable discharge. It felt like a desperate effort to keep up with the competition. EA and now closed Danger Close Studio flew their stealth attack chopper too close to the sun, delivering a product that focused too much on the message and not enough on the experience. Those beards, though, those were on point. If he flipped, he didn't do it by choice. Get down! Number 5. Flashback. The original Flashback is nothing short of a classic. It features incredible animation, an intriguing story, and a distinct style. The 2013 reboot of the same name only tarnishes that legacy. Awful voice acting, awkward combat, and plenty of bugs are only some of the problems afflicting this complete train wreck. Worse still is that Flashback attempts to modernize itself in the worst ways, with a skill system that hardly has any effect. 
The only positive thing we can say is that it lets you play the original, making us long for the days when that was the only game bearing this title. We'd consider this a remake instead of a reboot if it wasn't for Flashback's 1995 sequel, Fade to Black. Let's hope we don't get an awful update of that as well. That one stings a little. Number four, Bionic Commando. So let's get this straight. We go from the sleek 8-bit Aqualine Rad Spencer going up against, and let's be honest here, a resurrected Hitler, whose head blows up by the way, to a Fago drinking Juggalo whose three-dimensional swinging antics are powered by a bionic arm which, and we're obligated to say spoiler alert here, so if you really wanted to experience this gem of mediocrity, cover thy ears because his bionic arm is his wife. Think of that as your white boy dread sway in the breeze, because Nathan, we played as Rad Spencer. We knew Rad Spencer. Rad Spencer was a friend of ours. And Nathan, you're no Rad Spencer. This is gonna hurt. Number three, Alone in the Dark. 1992's Alone in the Dark set the standard for survival horror that games like Resident Evil and Silent Hill would eventually follow. However, without consistent follow-ups, it soon became overshadowed by its console contemporaries. Flash forward roughly 16 years, and Atari's new vision for the series ends up overextending itself with an episodic structure that interferes with the pacing, forced driving sections, and melee attacks mapped to the right analog stick. Plus, it's hard to stay scared when bugs force you to repeat sections or render enemies inert. Number 2, Sonic the Hedgehog. We're running out of bad things to say about this game. It's already appeared in more than one of our countdowns and was almost disqualified when we remembered it topping the top 10 worst sequels. Honestly, we couldn't tell you what this game is. Sega called it a reboot, reviewers called it a sad sequel, fans called it regrettable, and we've nearly run out of words. Playing the game this week, it all came flooding back. The frighteningly uncomfortable story, the spastic, unpredictable pace. It's not a game you play, but a game you fight like hammering a square peg into a round hole. Believe it or not, it isn't the worst reboot of all time. Okay. Number one, SimCity. The SimCity series has always been about building your own little world, laying out streets, putting up buildings, and making your citizens happy. It was never about being social, but for the 2013 reboot, social and multiplayer elements were wedged in to justify always-on DRM. The game's servers crashed at launch, the detailed simulation turned out to be a facade, and cities were limited to unsatisfyingly small plots of land. What we wanted out of the new SimCity was more of what made the series great. What we got from this reboot was a product that had its soul gutted and replaced with a nightmare of corporate buzzwords and premium expansion packs, building the future of the beloved PC series on a very rocky foundation. 